Welcome to another Yarnspirations tutorial. My name is Brittany and I teach over at Be Hooked and today I'm going to demonstrate all of the techniques you need to know to complete the Bernat Women's Curvy Crochet Cow Pullover. Head over to Yarnspirations.com to download your free pattern and let's get started. Before we learn anything, we need to get the hang of the stitch pattern. The texture looks so complex, but it's only a combination of two stitches. Let's see how it's done. We're first introduced to the stitch pattern in the front and back. So if you're following along with the written instructions from start to finish, the first thing that you're going to do is work the front and the back panels, and they're worked exactly the same. So I have my foundation chain here to start, and we're instructed to single crochet in the second chain from the hook. And just a little mental note, we're going to have single crochets on either side of the panels that's going to finish off and start each row. Now the stitch pattern is really quite simple. It has a great texture, but it's only a mixture of two very simple stitches. We're gonna start it off by half double crocheting in the next chain. So this is stitch number one of our repeat. Followed by a slip stitch in the next chain. This is stitch number two in the repeat. And that's it, that's all there is to it. We're going to start off again. So half double crochet in the next stitch and a slip stitch in the next. And we're going to repeat this sequence until you get to the end of your row. And then don't forget that last chain is reserved for a single crochet. Now it's pretty simple to work the stitch pattern in the chain and the instructions do help you quite a bit along the way. The first three rows are going to be very informative to tell you exactly what stitch you need to do. But at some point you really need to get comfortable with the stitch pattern repeat because later on in the instructions it's just going to tell you something like pattern to end of row or pattern to last two stitches. So when you see that referenced, that's your cue that you're going to just work this stitch repeat, the half double crochet followed by the slip stitch and then repeat. Now the first half of the pattern really holds our hand a lot in terms of the stitch pattern. So for the first couple of rows, actually the first three rows of the front and back panels, you're just going to follow the instructions word by word. What I wanted to point out though is to see the pattern because as you progress through the pattern, it's going to be a little less obvious about what you need to do in terms of when you need to slip stitch and when you need to half double crochet. All you have to do is look at the previous row and that's going to tell you exactly what you need to do. So here I've started off on a next row and I have two different stitches, right? We're working with slip stitches and half double crochets and this is what they look like. So this stitch right here that's kind of short and scrunched down is a slip stitch from that previous row. Then we can see this bigger, more open stitch. That one is a half double crochet. Whenever you see a slip stitch or one of these scrunched up stitches, that's your cue that you need to half double crochet. So I can see that short scrunch stitch. Next, I'm going to half double crochet there. And then when I see the half double crochet or that big open stitch with this nice pretty bar, I'm going to slip stitch. When you're making something to wear, we need to shape each panel for a great fit. One way we do this is with increases. There are many ways to increase, but the concept is all the same. Let's have a look at the increase used in this pattern. Since we're working with single crochet stitches on the edges of all of our panels, we're going to increase with a single crochet stitch. So an increase in its very simplest form is just an additional stitch in one. So that's all we're going to do. We've made our chain one, I've turned my work, and then I'm going to insert my hook into that first stitch and single crochet. So that's the normal one. Then I need to do the increase and that is to make another single crochet in the same stitch. 
Then we're just going to continue on with our stitch pattern because we want to increase on the other side as well. Now the frequency for the increases are going to change depending on the panel that you're working on and how abruptly we want this change to occur, but we are going to increase on both the beginning of the row and the end of the row. So I've continued my stitch pattern all the way until I reach the very last stitch, which you can see right here. And then all I need to do is make two single crochets in that stitch and that is going to increase once again. So when we do this, we are increasing by two stitches total because of one stitch at the beginning and one stitch at the end. Shaping is a critical skill to understand when making garments. We've already seen how to work the increases. Now let's have a look at how to work the decreases used in the shaping of each panel. So the decrease we're going to use throughout this pattern is the single crochet two together. You're going to see it in the front and back panels as well as the sleeves. So when you get to the end of your row, this is what the decrease is going to look like. You're going to work until you have only two stitches remaining. And just a word of caution, this last stitch here, the single crochet, has a tendency to kind of not look like a stitch. It's really easy to miss. So you just want to be careful that you do have two stitches remaining when you get to the end of your row to do this decrease. And then you're just going to insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. Then insert your hook into the last stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops to complete the single crochet two together. And what we've done here is we have decreased our stitch count by one. So that's what the single crochet two together looks like at the end of a row, but we are going to decrease at the beginning and the end of the rows throughout this pattern. So let's see what it looks like at the beginning of the row. Now, when we need to single crochet two together at the beginning of the row, the concept is exactly the same. So we have our chain one because that's what we're supposed to do at the beginning of the row. I'm going to find my first stitch because this chain one doesn't count as a stitch. So that means I need to use this stitch right here. So I'm going to insert my hook into that stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. Then insert my hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. Then yarn over and pull through all three. So now that you've seen the technique of single crocheting two together, the next thing you'll need to consider is the frequency. It does vary from panel to panel. Sometimes we're going to be decreasing a little bit more frequently than others, just pay close attention to your pattern and it's going to tell you exactly what you need to do. One of the things that's really important as we're crocheting garments is to keep track of our increases and decreases and those repeats. Now this little tip will save you a lot of time in the long run because it's really easy to get distracted and then of course that always leads to frogging. Well, what I do is I use a stitch marker to help me mark my increases and decreases. So what I've got here is my sleeve and I'm working through the section where we are instructed to decrease on one row and then we work three rows without decreases and we're supposed to repeat that a total of seven times. So I place my stitch marker over my decreased stitch. So this is my single crochet two together. I've marked that. So that tells me two things. It says that when I'm working in this row, that I'm on a decrease row so that by the time I get all the way back to the other side, I haven't forgotten that I need to decrease there as well. The other thing it tells me is where I am within that four row repeat. So I'm working up the second row of this repeat. I'm just going to work the last few stitches here. And I'm going to make my last stitch just right there with the stitch marker just kind of letting it sit there and then I'm going to go on to the second and third row. In addition to using those stitch markers to help me keep track of my repeats, I also take lots of notes on the pattern. So I do recommend that you print it out if you haven't done so already and grab a pen because you're going to want to keep track of where you are on the pattern. So I'm actually working through this section right here where I've shaped the raglans and I'm coming into this repeat right here. So the first thing that I consider 
is the last number of stitches I was given. So 43 in my case for the size that I'm working on. And then I need to also consider how many stitches I lost or gained, and in this case lost, from this row right here. We left two stitches unworked at the beginning and the end, so I'm subtracting four stitches total. That brings me down to 39. Now I consider this row right here, and I did not lose or gain any stitches here, so my count is still 39. And then I move down to this row, and I see that I am decreasing. Remember, the single crochet two together decreases by one stitch, and I have two of those. So I've decreased by two stitches before I even got to this repeated section. That brings me down to 37. The other thing you'll consider is how many times you're supposed to repeat it. So the pattern tells you right here that we're going to repeat the last four rows six times more. Now I also need to factor in that this 37 number is where I started on my first repeat. So it tells me to repeat it six times more, but I've actually already repeated it once. So that 37 is for the first of seven repeats. And then I consider the decreases for each repeat. So we discovered back in this row right here that we're decreasing by two stitches every time we get to this row. So I'm just going to decrease my number, my 37 number here by two stitches seven times. And I'm just gonna write it out. So 37, 35, 33, 31, 29, 27 and 25. So that is my seven repeats. These numbers are my stitch counts at the end of each one of those repeats. Now the last thing I might do is, is just number these. So that's repeat one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, just as a visual cue for me so I know which repeat. And that's gonna correspond to the little tally marks that I make every time I complete a repeat. So I've worked through the repeat once already before I even got to that point. So I'm just gonna put one little check mark there. I know that I should have 37 stitches at the end of that repeat. Then I'll work through those four rows again. When I finish that, I'll make another tally mark. I'll look over here and see that I should have 35 stitches. Count that, verify that I'm on the right track, work through the repeat again, check mark, check my stitch count, and so on. So that's the general idea. I do that for every single time I have a significant repeat. Another great stitch we'll use to create the texture in this pattern is the single crochet through the back loop, abbreviated SCTBL. We'll use it on the cuffs and the collar to create a great ribbing effect. Let's see how it's done. So I have the beginning of one of my cuffs here, and we're gonna work the single crochet through the back loop and to do that, I'm just gonna start off my regular row. So chain one, turn my work, and then I wanna focus in on the top of the stitch. So I'm looking at each one of these stitches and you can recognize a noticeable V. Well, together, those two loops equal the one stitch. Well, as we're crocheting, we're looking at the work this way and one leg of that V is towards us and one is behind it or away from us. So this is called the front loop and this one is called the back loop. So that's where the through the back loop part comes into play. So since our chain one is not counting as a stitch, we're gonna locate our first stitch. So don't get that confused with this guy right here. That is our chain. We're gonna find the next stitch or that same one and we're going to insert our hook just in the back loop only and then work your single crochet as normal. Then we'll locate the next stitch, put our hook through the back loop, and work your single crochet. And that's all there is to the single crochet through the back loop. Now as I work a few more of these stitches, you can see that the front loop is left exposed. And when we look at this work, after we've worked up a few rows, we can really see a ribbing texture. So this is typically going to be the, the bottom or the top on both sides. So when we 
when we work through the cuff, it's going to be facing this way so that the ribbing is kind of striped like it normally would be. In addition to the stitches in this pattern, there are a few techniques you'll need to know to finish each panel and assemble your pullover. We're going to have a look at all of those next. When you get to the point where you need to add a new ball of yarn, you just want to consider your stitch. What I like to do is change to the new ball of yarn in the middle of my stitch. While I finished my half double crochet, I have a little bit of a tail here. So I'm going to move on to the next stitch, just to insert my hook into the stitch and then grab the new ball of yarn. I'm just going to fold a tail down about the same length, just five or six inches, place that on my hook and pull up a loop. Now it should look pretty familiar from here. Whenever we do a normal slip stitch, we would insert our hook, yarn over, and pull up a loop, and this is what we would have. So I'm steadying the new yarn here with the back in the in the back of the work with my hands, and I just want to pull that new yarn here through the remaining loop on my hook. Now this loop will be a little loose, so I'm just going to go ahead and grab that tail to steady it. and then pull that through. So I finished my slip stitch, and now what I need to do is just flip it over and secure these tails. Now we are gonna weave them in later, so it's not a huge deal, but I like to just go ahead and tie just one or two knots just to make sure they stay in, and then you can either leave the knots there and weave them in. Some people don't like to do that, and in which case you would just undo the knot and weave them in like you normally would. When you complete a panel, you're going to need to fasten off, and it's really simple to do that. You just leave your working loop on your hook, then take some scissors and trim yourself a tail that's like six or eight inches long. You want to be able to weave this in later, and then take that tail and pull it through the loop on your hook. And that's all there is to fastening off. When you're ready to start seaming this thing together, the first thing that I would recommend doing is sewing the raglan seams first. So what I have here is my sleeve and my back, and I have laid them out so that I am matching up these two little points, the parts where we slip stitch across there. So I'm lining it up here and allowing it to work all the way down here to the end. I'm just gonna start seaming at one end. Now you can use really whichever seam you prefer because the, the pattern doesn't really specify one or the other. However, the, the thing that's going to determine whether or not this is going to be a, a nice clean seam is the consistency in your needle placement. So where you're putting your stitches. Now one thing I like to keep in mind when I'm working seams is the yarn that I'm working on. So this is a roving style yarn as you've noticed it, if you untwist it, it's going to weaken, and we don't want that. So rather than working a whip stitch where I'm constantly going in the same direction, that is going to unwind my yarn. So I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna work in one stitch, and then I'm going to come back through in the other direction. Now, if you can, try to make one stitch per row. If you can keep track of your rows that way, that's gonna give you a better result. And make sure you're consistent in that placement. I'm gonna stress that again, because if you take a stitch that's really shallow first, and then you take a stitch that's really deep, you're gonna end up with kind of a jaggedy join. The last stitch we need to learn to complete our pullover is the reverse single crochet used on the finishing edge. So the first thing you want to do is situate your pullover so that the right side is facing out and so that you can work in the opposite direction that you're normally used to working. So here I've got my sleeve over on this end and my starting edge right here. Now first let's take a look at what we're working our stitches into. There is going to be a space of time where we are working in the side of the rows that we worked for the front and the back section, but then as we progress to the bottom, we're actually going to be working in stitches. Well, that's much easier. When we get to this part, we're just going to work our hook under both 
loops of the stitch, but when we're working in the side, we just need to do the best we can to make it look as neat as possible. So the first thing I'm gonna do is find my first little opening of the row that's right here underneath the armhole. Then I'm going to take some yarn and create a slip knot. Place that loop on my hook, pull it nice and tight, and pull it through the row. I wanna chain one, that's gonna just secure the, the join. And now to work the reverse single crochet, we are simply going to just work the single crochet stitch in, in the backwards motion. So it feels a little bit different, but just know the principles behind the single crochet are the same. So I'm going to swing my hook around, insert it into that opening, then I'm going to yarn over a little bit backwards to what I normally would, and then pull that through. I wanna be careful that I'm not pulling it through the first loop, because we still need to have two loops on our hook. Then we're gonna yarn over and pull through two. And then I'm just going to repeat that for the next stitch. I'm gonna find the next place where I wanna work my stitch, and then I'm going to insert my hook into that space. Then I'm going to yarn over, pull up my loop so I have two, yarn over and pull through two. And keep going. Now this stitch is gonna feel really awkward at first. And even for me, I don't do this stitch every day, so it still feels a little bit weird to me. It does get easier over time. So at, at the beginning here, it's, it's gonna be difficult and it's gonna feel weird and backwards. But by the time you get to the other side, you're gonna find your rhythm and it's gonna be a little bit more comfortable. So now that I've worked a few stitches, I wanna show you what it's supposed to look like. This is what makes the reverse single crochet so cool. It's pretty much only usable for edging because there's not really a workable stitch that you can go into after you do this, but it looks so cool, so bumpy, and we're gonna add this texture around the entire bottom of our pullover. So that way, pretty much all of the stitches and the rows on the front and the back section are going to have this little border. Now, once you've made it all the way around to where you started, the last thing we need to do is join with the slip stitch. Now, if you can find your, your chain one from your join, you can go ahead and join with the slip stitch there, but honestly, it's, it's not necessary. You just wanna work your hook wherever you can get it to go. <laughs> pull that through, and then you're just gonna pull that same loop through the loop on your hook. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you'd like to see more crochet lessons from me, be sure to let your inspirations know in the comments section, and you can also check out BeHookedCrochet.com. There you'll find over 400 videos to help you improve your crochet and knit skills. On behalf of Yarnspirations.com, I will see you next time.